Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it. What is a vacation? I think vacations are for the week, but she's been on one and apparently she's still on one. It's Sarah Frazier. I'm vacationing for like five weeks this summer, David Yontef. I mean, you need to take a, okay, maybe five weeks is excessive, but you need to take a page out of my playbook, honey. Let me it, tell you it's something. for you to relax. Let me tell you something. I believe in answering all emails on a vacation, cool. work on a vacation. I just, I feel like we're in a different world with these technologies today. Okay. Well, can I, I can I tell you, I no longer, and maybe it's because you and I own our own businesses, but I no longer do the, you know, the at the away message on email. I don't do that anymore. Oh God, no. Because I just feel like people need, I, I do, I agree with you. People need answers. And even though I might like wait three days to, to get back, to check the emails, I don't, I don't do away messages anymore. I do always check my email. Is this sound good today? Because this is a last minute, uh, no, am, am I having I mic issues? It, no, it sounds okay. great. Let me know. Remember we recorded once and then it was jumbled afterwards. No, this sounds great, I think. And I know you're thrown off. You have no headphones. I'm in Maine. I just, I have a thing where like, I like my headphones. Um, I, I don't even know where to start. I, I literally don't know what to say today. Okay. Well, I, I think we should start with, I always love when you and I interact with our Bravo liberties in real life. And you've had two big uh, interactions. One, you went to the crappy lake, like premiere with Luann. P.S. You guys both look stunning. Luann, Luann might be my new favorite. She's almost like Angelina Jolie. She I'm doesn't sure. age. I mean, she really is. I don't know. How does that girl drink and smoke as much as she does and look flawless? Does she drink anymore? I don't know. I'm not. I mean, was she drinking at crappy lake premiere? Spill it. Listen, I was in, I was too busy. Segue, David. I was too busy avoiding people at the Crappy Lake premiere. Like, wait, listen, I've said this before. I I had to go to the city anyway the next day to interview Cy De Silva from the New York Housewives, which we have to talk about Roni. So I was going in on Monday anyway from the Hamptons and Luann wanted me to come to this and I you know, to talk about what a great show it is here on air. I do not say no to Luann. Luann is, I've said it before, she's been good to the show. She has come on the show before it was a hit, back when I was just building this up. I am loyal for, that's how I am. I, I am a loyal person. Luann was there for me when I was nothing, Sarah, before oh. all of this. And she, she has come on the show. She's come on the show more than any housewife has ever had. Do you know that? How many appearances? Has she done four? I think like, no, I think like seven. <gasps> Man's been on here a lot. Wow. Holy yeah. God. Okay, yes. She's it's been on here a lot. So I went into the city on a Sunday night. I know these are first world problems, people. I get it. To go to the premiere of Crappy Lake for Luann. And as I was going in, I said, let me make a list of all the people I have to avoid. I honestly thought I would just have to avoid Sonia Morgan. I literally was like, well, Sonia must be there because it's her show also, even though this is Luann's party. Oh, no. Luann was there. Dorinda was there. Ramona was there. So I spent the evening. Well, really, Sonia, I, I just avoided altogether. Sonia hates me more than um, Ramona hates me. Really? See, I almost feel like Sonia wouldn't even remember. <laughs> I agree. But she. Does. I agree she with you. Let me explain. Do you want me to explain why Sonia hates me? Should we just break it down? Yes. Well, a couple of things. First of all, I will always do my job and my loyalty is towards this audience. So at one point, lovely, lovely. I became friends with her. I love Megan Hubert. Um, Me Megan Hubert. Um. She was one of Sonia's former interns and I had her on this podcast and we didn't, we really, really, I have to say this is back when I was starting and I cared and I tried to be nice to everyone before being honest. So we really did a soft water down. Like we were not so mean to Sonia. We were as nice as we could be based on the circumstances of how Sonia treats her interns. Like, you know, it's not my fault that she wants someone to bathe her at night. 
it's not my fault that she has a phone that says like comp comp. And because she's out of money, she only goes to restaurants that let her eat for free. And then she doesn't want to pay the. It's not my fault that these are actual facts that this individual experienced. And, you know, you can't keep people down anymore and have harsh working conditions. The writers are on strike, Sarah. There's a sack after strike. So. I'm a member. I'm a member. I, We're on well, strike, darling. You're on strike, darling. So, you know, based on all these things, we were, I was as, we were as nice as possible. That upset Sonia. She got upset that Sonia. Well, then maybe you should treat people better that work for you. I mean, how is this? It's like, what comes first, that the horse or the cart? Um, whatever that fucking saying is. But um, the other reason, the real, I think the nail in the coffin was I was invited as friends and family to attend her cabralesque show. Remember this one yes. woman thing? Yes. And I really, again, was not even really as brutally honest as I could have been. I, I mean, I gave my honest opinion of what I saw. I gave my honest opinion of what I saw. And, you know, the fact that it was a bloody ass mess and Sonia was the talent. And I mean, listen, I love a good martini, honey. But when Kim D and I do our live show at City Winery at 924 in Philadelphia, I literally have one drink. I want to have six. I have one drink because like I'm not here for myself. I'm here for these lovely people that bought a fucking ticket and came from down the street or five states away. That's good. I felt Sonia was and it's here's the thing. I brought people to this show that don't watch Housewives because I was allowed like a plus one. And the person I was with, like it towards the middle of the show was like, is she on something? So like this person doesn't know that Sonia is like the town drunk on Roni. So it's just the, the average. And I looked around and I'm like, oh my God, like everyone is kind of, and it really like this, I don't say like it was mean. Like I had that sad feeling. I did. Sure. Okay. I know what you're talking about. So when I gave this review, this true review, as nice as can be Sonia, I did was a night. It wasn't, it didn't go over well with her. And then I felt bad. But I mean, am I supposed to lie to these people that are listening? No, you're in a tough spot. We we talk about that as an ongoing theme on this podcast. It's you, you have to, be, you're of the people or you're of the industry. And, you know, it's Guess we're of the people. We're of I've, the people. We have uh, moments where we want to be of the industry. It's tough because you do get to know these people. But I mean, knowing Sonia from seeing her a decade on television, which she deserves a ton of credit for, does it shock me that Sonia's show was a mess? No, I mean, in a way, Sonia ought to embrace it because I don't think people care anymore whether she's a mess or not. She has her loyal fans. The toaster is never coming out. You know, she's a drunken mess. We want her back. She's obviously got a show on Crappy Lake. I mean, the woman keeps going. Um but no, you have to be, you have to be truthful. And and we know, we see it all the time. These star 